to mention right now at the start of the show that we're taping this program on Tuesday. You we're can't airing get this any more night. timely than that. Say what? You can't get any more timely than that. Say what? Well, the first voice you heard was Irv Cross, the former CBS uh, TV pro football commentator, who was subbing for Bob Costas on Costas National Radio Show night before last, admitting it had been taped the Tuesday before. The Tuesday before. You can't get any more timely than that. <laughs> that voice belongs to the Dorksters, ABC's Monday Night Football, Pain in the Boot. <laughs> that was part of a pitch the Dorkster made one time to peddle his syndicated radio show. Hi there, this is Dan Deardorff. I always said the only way I'll ever do a syndicated radio show is if I can talk about what's going on right now, today. Well, we found a way. The show is called Offsides. And every week, I'll head to the studio and record five programs on what's going on in the game. These will be sent to you via satellite at several convenient feed times each Thursday. You start airing them the next day. You can't get any more timely than that. That is so much crap. Yes, the dark stirs should team up with Irv Cross. I'd like to mention right now at the start of the show that we're taping this program on Tuesday for airing this Sunday night. You can't get any more timely than that. Okay. <laughs> You do. I'm Jim Healy on KMPZ Los Angeles and the Golden West Radio Network. Brought to you by Spires Restaurants, Comp USA, and the Southern California Chevrolet Dealers. Headline, Hollywood Say What Department. Sports guy and KNX, KNX Radio this morning at 845, pulled the dandy boo-boo. Get to the point, will you, Jim? Okay, for background, home team New Mexico State was a three, three-point favorite, favorite, over Nevada, Las Vegas last night, right? Right. But here's what the KNX guy said at 8.45 this morning in reporting New Mexico State 1, 90 to 88. The big upset of the night. That is so much crap. Oh, dude, I've My got lips to know. are sealed, but the KNX sports guy's initials are FG, FG. You know, most of these people doing sports on all news radio stations here, they just don't have a clue, do they? I blow it out. <laughs> Stay tuned. Headline, Tijuana, goof number two. Same boo-boo of a three-point favorite. New Mexico State's win over UNLV last night was pulled by the sports host on Baja Radio at 12.08 p.m. today. He called it the big shocker of the night. Now, what's going on down here? <laughs> Headline, Ango, a name from the past. Brad Pye, long ago sports editor of the LA Sentinel, is running for the Inglewood City Council in recent years. Brad was an aide to veteran politician Kenny Hahn. But Pye did not, did not write Hahn's script today. Kenny described the wonders of the new LA Coliseum scoreboard. They're going to have instant replay on some of the major uh, <laughs> uh, football <laughs> plays as well as uh, track races or something. Now, what's going on? <laughs> Headline, Sunset Strip, incoming note. Very kind words from listener Tom McNamara who says, I don't care much for sports, but I love your show. Ah, blow it Stop out. <laughs> Headline, Westwood, flashback. Little realizing an upset was coming, UCLA's Jim Herrick was in a jovial mood before last Thursday's SC game. It's going to be another ball burner. <laughs> in fact, Herrick appeared at KMPC sponsors' party for 100 people on campus before the game. When Bruin broadcaster Chris Roberts asked him for a prediction, the party group was ready to crack up in anticipation. It did when Herrick said, it's going to be a real barn burner. They knew what he meant. It's going to be another ball burner. <laughs> Headline, Los Angeles Double Take Department. In this morning's baseball transactions, transactions on sports page six, it says both, both St. Louis and San Diego signed pitcher Tim Morrell yesterday. Now, what's going on down there? Who goofed? I've got to well, know. Well, at least they can't blame this one on Tom Lasorda. Hey, my f***ing fault. Kim Pattis is the f***ing guy. <laughs> Headline, Woodland Hills Mathematical Confusion. Valley Daily News. Daily News has a problem with Matt. No, lo, notes listener FZ. Get to the point, will well, you? Well, in its all-time money-winning golf uh, leaders yesterday, the Daily News had Fred Couples number five and Payne Stewart number six, but showed Stewart with more money than Couples. Now, what's going on down here? <laughs> that wasn't all. It next had Jack Nicholas number seven all-time and Paul Azinger number eight, though Azinger's total was higher. Now, what's going on down here? <laughs> 
Headline, Sunset Strip. More incoming faxes. Listener Craig E. wonders whom ex-catcher Daryl Porter likes in the National League this season. Man, I don't know. Who knows? Uh, who knows? I don't know. Say what? Daryl Porter, a man who'll give you an answer when you ask for a prediction. Man, I don't know. Who knows? Uh, Lester also wants famed Hawaiian sportscaster Walter's opinion on the American League race. We Hawaii, we like the California Angels, Gene Autry Cowboys. We will beat them to it. <laughs> Headline, Sunset Stretch, Strictly Opinion. KMPC's Jim Lampley, who knows his way through the TV ratings jungle, heard the shocking uh, numbers, the shocking numbers here last night, that local team UCLA and Duke, Duke, one of the nation's perennial glamour teams, got only a 2.2 rating and five share here. That is here on Sunday. Lampley said this morning that might have been the final doom toxin or bell of doom for Coach Jim Herrick when he has his big meeting with UCLA officials after the season. It's going to be another ball. <laughs> hey, line, Las Vegas closing college basketball line. Some had it nine and a half, but Caesars Palace closed Michigan nine points over Iowa tonight with the 153 overs and under. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Stay tuned. State line, Los Angeles, late NBA line. Caesars has the LA Clippers two and a half points over Houston tonight in the sports arena, but the JK Sports Journal has only two overs and unders, just 203 points on Clippers uh, Houston tonight. Okay. Stay tuned. State line, Denver, closing NBA lines continue. In their 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock game tonight in Denver, L.A. Lakers are either 3.5 or 4-point dogs, dogs, depending where you shop. Speaking of dogs, notorious Benoit Benjamin will get his second chance to please Laker fans tonight. I don't give a shit about the fans. <laughs> okay. State line, Los Angeles, press pickups. Did you catch uh, Jerry Crow's item in morning briefing in today's world champion? Yeah, I did. Well, naturally, everybody reads the L.A. Right. Times. Get to the point, will you, Jim? Okay, stay tuned. Okay. Headline, Los Angeles, fast follow-up. The item began in morning briefing today. Attention, Jim Healy. That it went on to cater to readers who are dog fans. I don't give a shit about the fans. <laughs> anyway, in the city of Los Angeles, there are 139 licensed dogs named Ben and 47 named Benjamin. <laughs> State time. Okay. State line, Los Angeles, final follow-up. But of more than 190,000 dogs registered here, not a single one is named Benoit. A disappointment to Benoit's old L.A. Clipper fan. I don't give a shit about the fans. <laughs> State line, Indianapolis, closing NBA lines continued. Host team Indiana tonight went in one point over San Antonio. And of course, San Antonio has the river. The San, what is the name of that river that goes through? The San Antonio River goes right through the heart of downtown Los Angeles. <laughs> State line, Los Angeles, flashback time. Week ago Saturday, the world champions, journalist Bill Dwyer and John Sherwa did a corking job getting their hands on the unsealed Pomona court documents. Regards world champion Jackie Willis Shoemaker's various lawsuits over his April 1991 accident that left Shoemaker a quadriplegic. Stay tuned. Okay. Hey, line, Los Angeles, fast follow. This past uh, Saturday, a week later, the letters to the sports editor column in the L.A. Times was flooded with derision towards Shoemaker, who's been assured $1 million cash by Ford because he was driving a Ford Bronco 2 plus another what amounts to $500,000 for settling with Ford. Get to the point, will well, you? Well, headline uh, to the L.A. Times letters to the sports editor column last Saturday was... Readers are stunned that Shoemaker was able to collect on accident. Hey, what? References to Shoemaker's blood alcohol level when later tested at the hospital, being 0 0.13, well over the legal 0 0.08 level. Right. Okay. State line, Los Angeles. Willie Shoemaker bashing continued. One incensed reader said, I am appalled he went after Ford and with the terms of the settlement. Stay tuned. State line, Sunset Strip, confidential follow-up. Yeah.
Is it true Willie Shoemaker did not go after Ford? That Ford, in fact, came to him. Joy and double joy. <laughs> Dateline Westwood Private Snoop Report. Is it true UCLA basketball coach Jim Herrick now has a public relations firm, public relations firm working for him, a PR firm? Joy and double joy. <laughs> so far, I haven't seen any signs of the type of campaign plan. It's going to be another ball burner. <laughs> They lie, Los Angeles say what department? Lead story this morning about Anaheim's new Disney-owned hockey team mentioned such Disney projects as Westcott Center. Say what? Yes, listener Matt B. says, we're all familiar with Disney's Epcot, Epcot Center in Florida, but where the hell did the scribe come up with Westcott? Who goofed? I've got to know. <laughs> they lie, Sunset Strip, more incoming faxes. Listener Bob S. Bob S. claims we goof. Quote, you said Benoit Benjamin could now be booed by fans in three different cities in little over two years. I don't give a shit about the fans. <laughs> Continuing to quote, the last I heard, the Clippers and Lakers were in the same city. Sorry, old boy, but Inglewood is a separate city unto itself, just like Beverly Hills, for example. Inglewood has its own government, its own city council. It is no more in the city of Los Angeles than Seattle is. Ah, blow it out. <laughs> they line, Sunset Strip, belated afterthought. Same listener is still another who was tremendously impressed by SC basketball coach George Ravelings. Off the cup, uh, uh, cuff ad lib comments after the Stanford loss two Saturdays ago about all the crapola excuses in society today about burnout and stress and other such BS. Hey, what? Listener says Rattling should give up coaching and become a motivational speaker. Right. They line Anaheim music, music brainstorm. In as much as the new Major League Hockey team in Anaheim is owned by Disney, Disney, may I be the first to suggest a theme song for the team? I don't think that's funny. I'll blow it out. <laughs> they line, Sunset Strip Correction Department. Listener uh, J.S., an M.D. and psychiatrist, has beef with today's Newswire, Newswire item about the Portland Trailblazers' Clyde Drexler. Quote, it says he's 29. Can't be. He's got to be closer to 32. Drexler was a Houston senior in the 1983 NCAA Finals when North Carolina State won. Who goofed? Reply. Well, you both did. Drexler's not 29, like Newswire said, and he's not 31 or 32, like you said. He is 30, 3 -0. Born June 22, 1962. Everybody gets an error. Joy and double joy. <laughs> Headline, Sunset Strip, uh, more incoming faxes. The flank is up. Listener uh, David R. Uh, found a goof, a goof in today's feature story this morning in the paper about John Henry being the only two-time winner in San Anita Handicap history. Now, uh, the race is a mile and a quarter, which is 10, 10 furlongs. But talking about the 1982 race, today's story says, to get John Henry ready for 12, 12 furlongs. Say what? Yes, 12 furlongs is a mile and a half. You mean they let everybody else run only a mile and a quarter, but made John Henry run a mile and a half? Ah, blow it Who out. goofed? I've got to know. <laughs> they lied, Sunset Strip, off the record. The flank is up. As sharp brokers who trade a lot of racetrack stock, what Hollywood Park certificates are actually worth, and the usual reply is, based on the land value and its racing future, Holly Park stock is worth no more than $12 or $13 a share. The flag is up. <laughs> okay. Hey, line, Los Angeles, startling follow. -up. Hollywood Park stock jumped again today. Closing bid was $19. Closing trade was 19 and a quarter. Now, what's going on down here? <laughs> the people at Spire's restaurants recently held their own economic summit in an effort to resolve the nation's most pressing issues. The results were amazing. What this country needs is a good patty melt. Not just any patty melt, but one with a juicy, pure ground chuck patty gently placed between two slices of melted American cheese and served on grilled rye bread. 
Convinced of the public's overwhelming support, our founding fathers soon forged a deal that included a choice of soup or salad, plus french fries, onion rings, or fresh fruit, as well as everyone's favorite, a refillable Coke. Quick to respond and determined to satisfy the appetites of the American people, Spires went so far as to drop the price of their patty milk combo to a mere $3.99. Widely recognized as a breakthrough in the fight to get the economy back on its feet, the Spires 399 Patty Melt Combo is heralded by patty melt lovers everywhere. Spires, making good food easy to find. Well, I'm here now with PC Modem, the computer genius from CompUSA. So, Bob, what's the most important thing to have when putting together a home office? A handsome wall calendar given to you by a local realtor. That's right, but you'll also want to go to CompUSA for verbatim three-and-a-half-inch high-density diskettes. Oh. They're the best way to save data, and they come with a lifetime guarantee. Uh -huh. Well, do you have anything to help me produce all my documents from memos and letters to technical manuals and database reports? Look, get the FrameMaker for Windows program from Frame. All right. It'll do just what you want. Finally, get the new 14.4 fax modem mini tower from Practical Peripherals. Uh -huh. It offers a high-speed data and fax modem and a sleek new space-saving design. And CompUSA has over 5,000 other great computers products. And everything's at super low prices every day. CompUSA is the computer superstore. So, Bob, do you really like working at home? Uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, except when the washer starts vibrating. It knocks the fax machine into the cat box. Verbatim, three and a half inch high density. Tom Ann. Maybe the reason for the cancellation is exactly what the promoters say. But boxing through the entire 20th century has been so shifty, so shady, so deceitful, you have trouble believing anything the people in it say. Right. For instance, if a boxing promoter told me tonight that Las Vegas is in the state of Nevada, I'd bet it's in Arizona. That is why we have a system of justice of Jewish prudence. <laughs> Bayline, Chicago. Looks like the Meyer family will coach DePaul basketball forever. Hey, what? Well, Papa Ray was there much of his adult life, and now son Joey has just been given a contract extension. Okay. Headline, okay. <laughs> Chicago. White Sox just turned baseball's oldest, oldest battery out in the cold, refused to offer salary arbitration to Carlton Fisk and Charlie Huff. You're talking about chicken sh <laughs> White Sox say, however, they want uh, Fisk back. Okay. Incidentally, which of the two is older? Answer. Did you say Fisk? Yeah, I did. Right. Fisk is 44 years, 10 months old. He is 10 days, 10 days older than Charlie Huff. Calabunga, dude! By the way, do you realize it was more than 12, 12 years ago that the L.A. Dodgers sold Charlie Huff to Texas? So what's the answer to a stock worth only 12 or 13 dollars a share, according to many brokers, jumping to a 19 bid and 19 and a quarter trade at closing time today? Now, what's going on down there? <laughs> okay. Headline, Englewood, confidential follow-up. Speculation tonight that Governor Pete Wilson just told California courts, courts, it's up to them to decide if Indians, Indians, will be allowed to operate Las Vegas, Las Vegas-type gaming tables in this state. One prominent local stockbroker with pipelines to the racetracks thinks this might have keyed the jump in Hollywood Park stock today. Quote, in other words, if the courts give the Indians to go ahead to run Vegas-type gambling, how could the state bar racetracks like Hollywood Park from doing the same thing. The flank is up. Headline, Los Angeles, last night's TV report. Well, uh, don't have one. There were no sports on TV here last night uh, that were nielsen Number one show was Fresh Prince of Bel-Air with an unspectacular 17, 4, and 25. Number two uh, followed immediately at Stablemate Blossom. And third was Vanna. I clap for everything white. <laughs> and Wheel of Fortune. Out of the money last night in fourth place was Murphy Brown. She is a lovely lady, and my apologies to her. <laughs> Dateline, Pittsburgh, tonight's shell game, con game, baseball Padres or Pirates, Pirates are howling they were conned 
by reliever Alejandro Pena's doctors, doctors, before they signed Pena to a guaranteed, guaranteed one-year contract last December. You're talking about chicken shit. <laughs> X-rays just taken show extensive damage to the 33-year-old Pena's pitching elbow, damage that he kept quiet. You're talking about chicken shit. <laughs> they lie in Los Angeles, follow-up flashback. It was about a quarter century ago that Don Drysdale's Hall of Fame career with the L.A. Dodgers was coming to a close. Amid strong rumors, all those years of sidearming finally had taken their toll, and his arm was riddled with aches and pains. That winter, I asked Dodger orthopedist Dr. Bob Curlin, an old friend of mine, if Drysdale indeed had serious arm problems. Curlin winked at me and said, of course he does, but Don's not going to say ouch till after he's got a signed contract. Calabunga, dude! <laughs> Stay tuned. Okay. They lie in Los Angeles, fast follow-up. Don Drysdale, of course, then went on to a successful career as a broadcaster. In fact, Drysdale even became a quasi-medical, medical expert, like the day L.A. Ram quarterback Pat Hayden was stretched out on the Coliseum. He might have just got maybe just a little bit of a severe head injury or maybe just kind of knocked his eyeballs a little goofy a little bit. <laughs> this is... Headline, Los Angeles, uh, personal to SC's George Raveling. I assume you were not serious when you told KMPC's Brian Goldberg this week you hoped uh, your bleep tape that we played four straight nights last week doesn't get you in trouble with the school president. That was the best minute and 53 seconds of your life, George. How could you get in trouble for that? Right. Dateline, New York City. John Starks uh, of the Rough Stuff, New York Knicks, just got a $5,000 fine for his flagrant foul Sunday that left New Jersey's Kenny Anderson with a broken wrist. Nick coach Pat Riley will naturally minimize the foul. I see more pushing in the men's room. <laughs> Dateline, East Rutherford. ABC TV just signed a multi-year uh, deal to televise the kickoff classic, which is college football's first game. A wonderful, a wonderful. Uh, this August 28, it will match Florida State and Kansas. A wonderful, a wonderful. Uh, <laughs> Headline, Camden, New Jersey court report. Defense rested yesterday with closing arguments beginning tomorrow in former Philadelphia Football Eagle owner Leonard Tosa's lawsuit against Atlantic City Sands Hotel Casino. That is why we have a system of justice of Jewish students. <laughs> Tosa 77 claims the casino got him loaded on free drinks, causing him to blow $14.5 million between 1981 and 86. Leonard Tosa has uh, lost it. <laughs> Dateline, Sunset Strip. More income you're trying to get me, aren't you? Right. <laughs> Headline, Sunset Strip, more incoming faxes. Listener uh, Jim W. caught the videotape replay on television of the recent chavez uh, Hogan fight in Mexico City when, where Don King grabbed a mic and referred to it as Splendoriferous. Say what? Well, that's King's buddy Mike Tyson. He makes up words, too. <laughs> Headline, Sunset Strip, program tip. Our 5.30 p.m. show is repeated on tape every midnight on KMPC. They <laughs> 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 find uh, Sarasota, Florida Highway Patrol Department. Pittsburgh Pirate reliever John Candelaria with the L.A. Dodgers last season charged with drunk driving in Sarasota. Cl Candelaria 39 checked in with better than a 0 0.10 blood alcohol reading. <laughs> okay. Dateline, Anaheim. Follow up, John Candelaria. He's long had a reputation for enjoying a belt or three. <laughs> when he was with the California Angels, 1985 through 87, Candelaria once got nailed on the same charge, driving home after the Angels had flown back from a road trip. Rumor at the time that an Angel Hall of Fame type teammate had somehow alerted the cops. Talk about chicken. <laughs> He'd been drinking on the plane, of course. Right. <laughs> Dateline, San Francisco, height of baseball shame. Isn't this something? Barry Bonds, who will average over $7 million a year over the next six years with the San Francisco Giants, 
has the following lifetime, lifetime average in National League playoffs. Playoffs, 191. State <laughs> 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 line, Atlantic City aside to listener Bill C. Thanks for the New York Times story about Leonard Tosa's suit against the Sands Casino, especially uh, the part about his having over 72, 72 non-winning nights there where he blew $14.5 million. Leonard Tosa has uh, lost it. <laughs> hey, lines, Sunset Strip. Late, late NBA lines. J.K. Sports Journal has Denver four and a half, four and a half points over the L.A. Lakers tonight. L.A. Clippers three, three over Houston. And Charles Barkley's visiting Phoenix Suns are two and a half points over Portland. Bad team, man. Bad <laughs> team. Headline, Arcadia attention, racing handicappers. Don't be surprised if a m very mediocre Argentine horse named Porto Ferraio beaten 17 and a half lengths in his only American start, is entered in Saturday's Big Santa Anita Handicap, warns Jack Disney. Reason, his owner has a new jet and wants to fly up from Buenos Aires to see him run. So if Porto Ferraio doesn't draw into a lesser race at Santa Anita Saturday, he'll run in the big cap. Yoy and double yoy. <laughs> Dateline Beverly Hills, aside to listener BC. Okay. <laughs> Dateline Los Angeles, aside to listener JT. Okay. <laughs> Dateline Sunset Strip, tonight's cornball stuff. From listener Paul Napolitano, who notes KMPC's Joe and Dougie uh, call their afternoon show here. McDonnell Douglas, but, but, if they fail to mention the new Anaheim Hockey Ducks, will it be the McDonnell Douglas show? Uh, uh. Joy and double joy. <laughs> Dateline, Sunset Strip, incoming faxes continued. Listener Everett S. claims he works with a man who talks exactly like UCLA basketball coach Jim Herrick. Sure enough, both, he says, came from the same valley area of West Virginia. What happens when they meet? It's going to be another ball. <laughs> Champions meet at Santa Anita this Saturday in the $1 million Santa Anita Handicap. Calumet's famed Jimmy Jones called it the toughest race in America to win, and only the great John Henry won it twice. Big pal drops the big cap. Saturday, best pal, last year's big cap champion, will try to match John Henry's back-to-back -back wins against America's best older horses. Jovial champion of the San Pasquale. Jovial now takes the lead on Champion of the San Antonio. Saturday champions meet for the season's biggest prize, the one million dollar Santa Anita handicap. Can Best Pal win back-to-back -back big caps, or will a new name be added to the list of champions? If you only go to the races once a year, make this Saturday the day. The Santa Anita handicap, where champions meet. Saturday at Santa Anita or live via simulcast at Hollywood Park in Los Alamitos. Special early first post parade at 12 noon. Chevy full-size pickups are the number one selling full-size trucks in Southern California. The reason? Deals like this. For a limited time, you can get a great-looking full-size Chevy Cheyenne truck for just $12,830. That's right, only $12,830, and it's only available in California. But what you get with your Chevy Cheyenne is the real deal. A powerful 4.3-liter engine, air conditioning, AM-FM stereo cassette, rugged oversized P235 tires, and rear-wheel anti-lock brakes. Regularly, a Chevy Cheyenne with all this would cost $15,638. But right now, this special California Cheyenne is only $12,830. That's a big savings. See your Southern California Chevrolet Geo dealer at only $12,830, including destination charges. These special California Chevy Cheyennes will go faster than this disclaimer. $12,830 MSRP of California Cheyenne versus $15,638 MSRP outside California includes tax, license, dealer prep, individual dealer prices may vary. See dealer for his price. It's time again.
again for Fred Hall's Spectacular Fishing Tackle and Boat Show, March 3rd through the 7th at the Long Beach Convention Center. The nation's finest show of its kind is four giant shows in one, featuring thousands of new fishing tackle items from the world's major manufacturers, hundreds of 1993 boats, and marine accessories, hundreds of fishing and hunting resorts from around the world, plus the Sportport Camping Expo 93. It's Southern California's biggest, most exciting outdoor recreation and entertainment value. See Sport Mart's Bass Bin. Enjoy free seminars in Turner's Seminar Room and new sports shooting theater. Win free trips from Willow Beach Resort and Ken Stewart's Sportsman's Tours. Kids fish free in the Sport Mart Trout Pond. Kids enter free. Test your skill at the Bear Archery Range. Learn the basics of fishing and camping at the Sport Mart Camping School. Pack up the kids and come on down to make great buys on boats, tackle, vacations, and camping equipment at Fred Hall's Fishing Tackle and Boat Show, March 3rd through the 7th at the Long Beach Convention Center. It's the best in the West. Headline, Sunset Strip, State Preview. Upcoming momentarily, another 25 minutes of Big Joe and Dougie. The numbers to call in Los Angeles and the Valley, 520-5672. In Orange County, 977-5672. Right. Headline, Anaheim. <laughs> Quarterback Bill Musgrave's passing and running back... Stop that, will you? Did you do that? Well, uh, that's the symbol of the new Disney-owned Major League Hockey team in Anaheim, the Ducks. Mighty Ducks, in fact, they're called. Get to the point. Well, you... when it first came out, Disney would own the team. They resurrected the old joke about it being a real Mickey Mouse club. <laughs> but now they've officially been named the Mighty Ducks. The duck jokes are flying. Say what? Well, for instance, will the team be timid on the ice and duck? Fight. And in as much as they're located in Orange County, will all the pregame meals be duck, l'orange? What was that? Didn't you? That was the dreaded six o'clock tone, right? Right. And how about this team's ability? Will the mighty ducks fill the bill? Finally, early next season when they're scheduled to play in Florida. Will the mighty ducks fly south for the winter? Jim Haley, you've got a weak show. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> That's the sports picture. The complete sports story right up to the moment brought to you by Spires Restaurants, Comp USA, and the Southern California Chevrolet dealer. Jim Haley, good night. <laughs>